Hey folks, today I'm going to go through my top five most anticipated games of 2019. So without further ado, let's just go straight into it. So number five is Machi Koro Legacy. Now, like many of you, I've played Machi Koro, the base game. I thought it was a very beautifully illustrated, cute, and fun little game, but it soon uh, wore out its welcome. And I think that's been a similar experience for a lot of people who have played this game. Nothing fundamentally wrong with the game, it's just perhaps a little bit too simple. But if you consider taking that as a foundation for a legacy game, things start to get very interesting, especially as Rob Davio, the sort of uncontested king of legacy games, is going to be firmly involved in the design of Machi Koro Legacy. My real hope for this is that it sort of strikes a balance. It uses that, fa that fantastic foundation of a, a city building game for uh, a very thematic legacy uh, style gameplay where you're developing the city over time, building it out, developing structures, upgrading structures to give you a much deeper and crunchier feel of Machi Koro, but also perhaps a slightly more accessible and lightweight legacy game, which traditionally are pretty intense and require massive commitment in terms of time and just making sure you get the right group of people together to play through multiple sessions of the game. If Machi Koro Legacy can kind of hit that sweet spot in between the two, being heavier and crunchier than Machi Koro, but perhaps on the lighter side of a legacy game, that could be really interesting. So that's my number five, Machi Koro Legacy. On to number four, Reavers of Midgard. This is a game that I backed um, on Kickstarter last year. I have played uh, the other game from this universe, Champions of Midgard, and while I enjoyed it, I found it was a little bit too light and a little bit too luck based. This game promises to be a deeper, chunkier, meatier experience um, with slightly different gameplay mechanisms as well. Uh, it's not going to be quite the same, although I think there's sort of uh, there's dice drafting, card drafting, <coughs> excuse me, a number of different um, other gameplay mechanisms in there. I think it's overall seems like it's going to be a deeper board gaming experience, and I think tying that in with the sort of um, excitement that the Champions of Midgard uh, game has created is going to be a pretty good combination. I think this is going to be a game that people will see, they'll enjoy the artwork, they'll enjoy the theme, they'll be interested to play it. So I think it's a game that if you take it to a game night, people are going to be interested in checking it out. At the same time, I think that deeper gameplay is going to offer a little bit more depth um, than the Champions of Midgard experience. And I actually believe that originally Reavers of Midgard was designed for a completely different theme and it was kind of rethemed with the champions of Midgard theme so you know maybe some of those flavors will will sort of carry through and and make it even more interesting really so this is my uh, number four Reavers of Midgard moving on to number three Edge of Darkness now this is one that I had to think about quite a bit and it's by the same designer of the game Mystic Veil vale. Um, uh, John uh, Clare and the interesting thing about this game is it has a relatively unique uh, board game mechanism which is card crafting so basically you start off with a, an acrylic or a transparent card that has one component built in and as you go through the game you add additional uh, components to build out the strength of this card upgrade that card so you're getting um, you know, a, a lot of depth around building out the powers and abilities of a single card. That's really interesting. And you know, just as a board gamer, I like to try out new mechanisms and, and this could be a really cool one to, to, to play. Um, and in addition to that, this game is gonna be offering a kind of group deck building functionality where you're sort of collectively building a, a deck and that is uh, usable by all the players at the table. Um, I think if you own one of the cards that's used, you get paid, but then it comes back into your hand so you can use it again, which is quite interesting. Um, and there's gonna be, at the core of this game, a sort of worker placement mechanism. You're a group of uh, individuals, patrons, I believe, in a, in a mystical city defending it from uh, evil blight, uh, the, the forces of evil blight, and there's this kind of cool uh, threat tower uh, where you'll be dropping cubes representing yourself and other players to uh, determine which player the monsters attack first. And I think there's a, a feature where if you're not able to effectively attack the city, you lose uh, standing or victory points in the game. But overall, I think the combination of that new um, gameplay mechanism, card crafting, and the group deck building, as well as a deep 
uh, rich uh, thematic and gameplay experience make this one really really interesting and this is one I, as I said I had to think about a little bit but it's, it's sort of gotten me more and more interested the more I've looked into it the more I've thought about it so that's number three Edge of Darkness moving on to number two now um, this is a game that you may have just heard about um, if you've been anywhere near social media uh, over the past few weeks but yeah Wingspan looks really really good um, it's that classic Stonemaier games um, quality I mean these guys have just set an amazing standard in terms of components and uh, inserts and packaging for their board games and you know it's fantastic I think for the industry in general um, that they're just continuously setting standards and breaking their own standards with the quality uh, of components uh, that they produce in their games but beyond that the reason why I think Wings Wingspan is going to be uh, such a great game for me to play is that it's that kind of Goldilocks weight to complexity um, uh, ratio. It's got some interesting engine building in there, but it's not sort of Terraforming Mars heavy or long. And considering that I really enjoy Terraforming Mars, it's one of my most played and, and favorite games, having an experience that's a bit shorter, perhaps a little bit more accessible for non-hardcore board gamers, uh, that could be really, really interesting. I mean, to be clear, I'm not crazy about the theme. I, I don't dislike birds. I, I actually, you know, quite like animal programs and, uh, you know, uh, nature programs. But, you know, I think the bird theme isn't going to be for everybody. But I see it more as something that's not going to put people off as some of the more kind of hardcore board gaming themes of fantasy or trading in the medi in medieval Europe or the Mediterranean or what have you. So I think that Goldilocks weight to complexity ratio and the accessibility of the game and just the beauty of the components is going to make this a really really fun gaming experience and potentially a game that you know I'll keep in my collection for a good amount of time. So that's my number two, Wingspan. Moving on to number one, On Mars from designer Vital Lacerda and the artist Ian O'Toole. Um, I don't know a huge amount about this game. Um, I believe it's going on to Kickstarter at some point over the next couple of months. But there's two things that, well, three things that really interest me in this game. Firstly, it's about Mars and space. And that's probably my most favorite board game theme. Um, I love especially sort of nearer future uh, sci-fi and space exploration uh, themes. And in addition to that, the artwork from Ian O'Toole just looks absolutely spectacular. This is... Um, you know, graphic novel quality artwork as far as I can see. Um, beyond that, I'm excited that it's a Vitel Lacerda design. I've never played any of his games, but he's a designer that I've seen crop up many, many times. I've seen, you know, uh, playthroughs of quite a few of his games, and there seems to be a unique combination of complexity, crunch, and thematic tie into his games that I just think I really need to experience as a board gamer. So, you take that to Mars, um, you add an amazing art, and yeah, count me in. This sounds very, very interesting. Um, as I said, I don't know too many details about the exact gameplay. I think it's going to be quite complex in terms of the game. There's going to be sort of, it's an economic game with city building and uh, upgrades and uh, other kind of features that you can uh, implement. But I think those combinations of the artwork and the design pedigree just really push it over the edge as my number one most anticipated game of 2019. Now, I will say there's a couple of honorable mentions I'll just mention very quickly. One is High Rise by Gil Hova. Um, don't know much about that game either, but it looks like a pretty interesting city building game. Um, the other one that I was quite interested in is Yokohama Duel. Um, Yokohama uh, is a game from a Japanese publisher designer, and there's now a two player version which looks very cool. Um, again, don't know much about it, but these are things to uh, look out for in the future. But again, that's my top five. Machi Kora Legacy, Reavers of Midgard, Edge of Darkness, Wingspan, and number one on Mars. Uh, I hope you guys found that interesting. Obviously, let me know on Twitter at Game Minimalist. Hit me up. Let me know what you think of my choices. Did I miss anything out? What were your most anticipated games for the, for the upcoming year? Um, yeah, I'd be really curious to, to know what you guys think. So thanks for your time and see you guys online.